Welcome to Sew and Tell, where sewists from fashion, theater, and indie sewing bring their different perspectives to the hottest topics in the sewing community. I'm Meg Healy. I'm Kate Seinard. And I'm Amanda Carestio. Today, we're celebrating three years of Sew and Tell with some listener questions. Then we'll talk a little bit about sewing for the holidays. We'll each share a little something in our Sojo segment, then we'll answer one more listener question. But before we begin, how's everybody doing today? Doing okay. I'm really happy to see you lovely people and chat with you about sewing. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. It's always a treat to record these. It really Mm -hmm. is. Yeah. I'm recording for the first time in my new home, Yay. which is fun. Uh, it was funny the last. So we recorded the last episode, and I was um, I was at my parents' house because um, Julian's just doing painting today, so it's not so loud. But they were doing demo, so I went over there to record, and I was done. And my mom goes, "Were you recording a podcast?" And I was like, "Yeah." She goes. It just sounded like you were just laughing for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's, how, that's how that they go. She goes, are you hilarious? That's how you record them. <laughs> it was that's so funny. Hysterical. Yeah, mom. <laughs> I'm a podcast professional. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, well, just sounded like you were laughing. <laughs> I didn't hear you say anything. <laughs> that's terrific. I know. I know. I thought that was so funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just realized, so like the previous owners left us a lovely, um, a really lovely uh, message and a, a write up about, you know, all these sorts of things. But this is the room that I'm in now. It's like kind of the wood panel, green shag carpet. And they used to use this as like a crafting room. And I realized I just looked down and I see a button on the floor. Aww. I know. And I found a hand sewing needle the other day in the shag carpet. <laughs> Because <laughs> I've been I'm sleeping in here uh, on on the floor, and but I just noticed a little button here. I'll get it. That's sweet. I know this is the crafting. The, yeah. What's a crafting room? A little button I just found. I need to sew that in something. It'll be cute. Yeah, uh-huh. more so, signs. It was just meant to be. Yeah. Meant right? to be. Yeah, but I know. Um, but this yeah. room is not nearly big enough for. Me, so I'm taking one of the bigger bedrooms. <laughs> so. <laughs> I need yeah. lots of space. For yeah, I feel like shag carpet would be yes. tricky for oh. that very reason. Like the oh. needles and pens, mm-hmm. that could be bad. And like the rolling factor yes. we, t- we talk about. Now Kate has the yep. lovely ability to roll on over to this. <laughs> to another machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so I want, yeah, I would love, I need to keep this green shag carpet, but I also need a studio without carpet because I'm a huge do you have a sewing like um a garbage pail right beside your machine and do you th- like I'm so bad at it. I just throw everything on the floor and then I clean it up after um I just got a second little trash can to put oh, yeah? by my machine for those like threads because I was the same way I would just toss oh, yeah. it like flagrantly <laughs> just- like <laughs> with abandon <laughs> Um, and then, but I wasn't so good about the like cleaning up portion. So mm. now I do find that, um, at least with threads and stuff, I'm a bit more tidy and that is good for like, if you have a rolly chair, because mm-hmm. I think it was, it was a couple of months ago. I finally like undid the wheels on my rolly chair and pulled out the thread knots <gasps> that were in there. Oh. Um, yeah. so yeah. I think I'm, I think it's, I think it's better now that I'm actually trying to hit the trash can, but yeah. it was, it was a long time coming. As for me, when I was in the, um, costume shop, I always did because we had a tile floor and we had a little part of the end of the day that was supposed to be, um, cleaning up stuff. So we would sweep at the end of the day and get all that stuff uh-huh. off the floor. Um, but here in my studio, I have a carpet and I, don't like to throw threads on the carpet because they're just hard to get up. And so I have a little cup next to me where I put my thread ends. um, And then I save them for stuffing pin cushions, like I'm always encouraging people to do. Right. I remember. Yeah, that's such a good idea. (laughs) Well, I mean, I got it out of the magazine. It was just like, okay, this is a great idea. I'll just save all my thread ends and actually do something with all those little bits of thread. And then I do have a trash can also nearby where I can throw like when I'm like notching, when I pull out little pieces or, you know, Mm -hmm. cutting off the end of a zipper or something Mm -hmm. where I toss the bigger stuff. Um. Side tangent, y'all, speaking of needles and pens, 
There was this really great reel that I saw recently, and it was about all of the weird places that you find pins. If you're a sewist, like in your carpet, occasionally in your clothing. Um, mm-hmm. And the other day I was, I was uh, finally switching out my fall, winter clothes uh, with spring and summer. And I walked by this garment and I was like, wait a minute. And I looked and in the hemline of the garment, there was a pen, like yeah. just in the garment, in my closet. I don't think I've actually worn it yet. So that probably is why I, I probably would have found it sooner. But it's really true. Pens get everywhere. Oh, they do. For me. My, my best friend, you know, she works in a, a bridal shop. And she often brings home dresses to work on at at home, like on her days off and in the evenings. Um, and so because of that, you you just know before you sit down in the kitchen chairs, just take oh, a quick no. look. Quit Luckily, she's got, yeah. you know, pins with bright yellow heads. So they're pretty mm-hmm. easy to see. But I've I even managed to get one in my toe um over the Ooh. summer, which was uh, which was awesome because I was wearing a I was actually wearing shoes. I was wearing sandals and I somehow managed to flip it into my toe. It was, it was actually pretty hysterical, but yeah, pins everywhere. Yeah. Just one of the hazards. Yeah. I've definitely walked around like my whole life for a day with a pin just like stuck in my crock. Like, (laughs) yeah. um, (laughs) I mean, it's basically like a pin cushion anyway. Yeah. Like like one of the the little silicone ones. Sure. Exactly. Oh yeah. Well, hey, let's hop into this listener choice uh, segment. We got some really great questions, some sewing related questions, some life questions, some food questions. Um, there's there's a lovely little assortment here. And I feel like there are there are questions on this list that I'm not sure if I know how you guys will answer. So we'll, <laughs> we'll learn a little bit more about each other as we go. Glancing at the list, I'm not sure how I'm going to answer several of them. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let's let's jump in. Um, These were fun. Let's start with this one because it this one made me very happy. Um, We got, how did you all get your first pet as an adult? Kate, you want to kick us off? Yeah, sure. Um, Well, I, I I was thinking about it, and obviously I was thinking about my cat Maggie, and then I realized Maggie wasn't my first pet as an adult. Um, I'm not. I'm almost positive I've never mentioned this before, but um, when I was when I was a young adult, um, still in the theater, I had um, a pet. uh, Actually, a couple pet mice over the years. And so I think I was just, I had had a, I had had a pet mouse when I was in high school. And then, um, I think I was just kind of lonely and my friend enabled me to go out and and we went out to the pet store and we found a a cute little guy who was kind of, he, it was kind of, he was kind of gray with frosted blonde tips. He was a very pretty little mouse. (laughs) Um, and I was working on the musical, uh, Jekyll and Hyde at the time. So I named him Henry, um, after Henry Jekyll, because his uh, coat kind of looked like the coat that Jekyll wore. Um, and he was very sweet and he kind of liked me and he loved Cheerios (laughs) and I loved him to death. Cheerios. Yes, he'd see me and he'd stand up in his cage and he'd reach up like, give me a Cheerio, give me a Cheerio. And I would because I loved him. And um, yes, that was Henry. And he lived He lived for a long time. He lived for about 17 months, which is a long mm-hmm. time for a mouse. And um, and yeah, I cried like a baby. He's uh, buried Aww. in my friend's backyard. <laughs> yeah. I love but, how you said he kind of liked me, but he loved Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how the list was. <laughs> I know. Uh, well, d- I mean, it was mouse. He was a mouse. But, no, I know. Um, I, just, I'm, I could say the same thing about my current bunny rat. He, he, right. he kind of likes me, but he loves cilantro. <laughs> exactly. Um, but there was this one time. Sorry, I'm going to tell this little story. I used to put him in a, in a little, you know, plastic ball when I was cleaning out his cage um, just so he didn't. You know, so he was somewhere while I was cleaning out his yeah. cage because oh, I was I love bleaching those things. Yeah, stuff. yeah. So he's yeah. running around, and one day I I'm in the middle of this, and I look down, and the top has come off the ball, and the mouse is not <laughs> in the ball, and I'm like, oh no! And I look, and he's only like 
two feet away from the ball. He's kind of standing in the middle of the of the room. And I'm like, oh, Henry. And he just walks over to me. And I was like, oh, hmm. all right. That was Good something. <laughs> I guess he knows he's not getting any Cheerios if he goes and hides in the mm-hmm. walls. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he kind of liked me. Cute. Oh, that's so cute. How about you, Meg? Uh, well, it, my our first pet uh, as an odd adult that wasn't like, you know, my, I had a childhood pet was my big bunny bacon mm-hmm. bits, my like <laughs> big giant foamless rabbit. And yeah, we just walked into the shelter thinking we might get a cat. We didn't even think about rabbit, but then the saw so- like it, we just fell in love with it. And so it was just like love at first sight. We just knew we had to have him. And we've had many bunnies. <laughs> the bunny train keeps going. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. And as I was packing, I remember I was packing his ashes in an urn and I just burst into tears. It was just like a couple of weeks ago and I was packing just like, oh, sweet little, sweet little. Bunny. You, you always remember like that first, you know, pet, yeah. that, mm-hmm. pet that you get as like, that's your very own. That, you yes, know, exactly. Um, my first pet as an adult was a cat that I inherited from my, at the time, my boyfriend's mom who died and I took in her like ancient calico and they were like, she, you know, she's just, this is her, her golden years. Like she's just yeah. got a little bit of time left. And it was like nine years later when she finally <laughs> passed. And, and she actually, I think my husband, don't check his math um, because he's, he's a storyteller, but I think he, they got her when he was in like third grade and she was still alive. Like. I don't know. He was, I think he was almost done with college when, when I got her. And then like, wow. I, it was just insane. She was like over 20 years old when she passed wow. and she was a terrific, uh, Calico Carolina. And now, um, after that, kind of the first one that we found or the, the first one that I got as an adult, that was just like not an inherited senior pet, uh, is Violet who is still with me. And she is a little, pity and we literally found her in the road like oh. on a dark night came around a corner and there she was just farting up a storm and she's like just the best little dog she's been through with me through I guess this is a period of time when like you a lot of life happens mm-hmm. um like 30s uh but like birth of three children, purchase of two houses, job changes, the death wow. of my mom. Like mm-hmm. she's been with me through a lot. So mm-hmm. she is my, she's my ride or die. And she's got her special spot in my sewing studio. We just, we hang out together. Oh, And she's lovely. She's super sweet. I've had the opportunity to meet her once or twice. She's yeah. a nice girl. Oh, she's a lover. And she's like, Winter is her season because she sleeps under the covers, like right next to me. Like Aww. she's she's my little space heater, and her nickname is Tiger Pig, <laughs> among <laughs> other nicknames. But Tiger Pig is the best. Nice. So, yay! So cute. Um. All right. Next question. This one's gonna be fun for me. <laughs> yeah. Um. What's one thing or two that you said you'd never sew and then did sew? Mm. I have 47, like, jumpsuits. <laughs> yeah, jumps. you do have a lot. <laughs> I, did, I was never really into sewing T-shirts, and now that's, like, my favorite thing to sew. Bathing suit. That might be it, just those four. Yeah. I'm not sure that I've ever, like, declared that I will never sew X or Y, um, because, you know, you never know. I Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like I mentioned in the last episode, breakaway G-strings, I... You know, especially I was I was in the theater. Never you never, never know. You never know what you're going to end up sewing. <laughs> Though I think I have expressed that I thought it was very unlikely that I would ever sew a jumpsuit, but I did. Um, yeah. I think I've only worn mm. it once. Um, I just, it's not my favorite thing, but I tried it. But you did it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I did it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm... Um, I have, of course, vowed that I will never again sew lame, um, and we mm. will see if I stick to that. Oh yeah, there's like a lot of fabrics. I will probably, I will never sew. I was thinking more about projects, but fabrics, oh yeah, no, like I, I, that's I like know. a whole other world of things to say no to. <laughs> but I, I think that's the only thing I've ever put my foot down and said I am never doing yeah. this again. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
I think mine is, I remember when we first started the podcast, kind of one of the early episodes, I said, I would never sew a quilt until I was a, a lot older. And I, I, you know, I sold one, I sewed one this year, like a little one. So that was one thing. And I definitely want to sew some more. It was just kind of, it was just nice. So <laughs> yeah, yep, never say never. <laughs> yeah. There's something very satisfying about the piecing when you Mm -hmm. You know, you put all those little pieces together and they were so annoying to cut, but now they make such a cool little design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, mine was just squares. (laughs) You took experiment. I want to get into the triangle world of quilting. (laughs) Right. Well, I've never, I've never done any triangle quilting, I don't think. So, uh, but my favorite way to quilt is with pre-cuts. So. Ooh, I didn't even think about that. Interesting. Yeah. Well, um, if you re- will recall, almost a year ago, um, mm-hmm. I was sent a, a kit, a table runner kit, and I'm completely, I've completely lost the name of the company, but I will figure it out and put it in the show notes. Um, but they sent me like it's it's a log cabin quilt and they sent me all of the pieces pre-cut and labeled and all I had to do was sew them together and Mm -hmm. definitely better than having to cut all those little strips myself. Mm -hmm. Was it Maywood? Was it there? Yes, it was Maywood. It was Maywood Studios. Thank you. Yeah, because it was for our holiday social. Remember, Mm -hmm. we also did aprons and they sent us back. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fun. Yes, so Maywood Studios. Look for their Mm -hmm. pods if you want to do some quilting without... uh, without any, uh, or with not having to cut very much. That was awesome. All right. Next question. Okay. This one's going to get a little heavy, but we, nothing we can't handle. Um, has sewing ever gotten you through a dark time? Not all at once. (laughs) I'll go first. Um, sewing. So when, when I'm going through dark times, um, I really lose a lot of motivation um, and I don't usually turn to something that takes as much as as much activity as sewing does. Like the mm-hmm. act of the- cutting it out and searching it and sewing it. That's that's a little bit too much for me to handle during a dark time. I'm more likely to sit down and do something more repetitive that doesn't require moving a lot, like knitting or crocheting or cross stitching. Um, but I I also have to say that. Um, when I was learning to sew, I had a very difficult experience, a a very difficult time. And the sewing contributed to that pretty hard. My, uh, Mm -hmm. my teacher was not very kind right then because he was under a lot of stress and he took it out on students, including me. Mm. And, um, so in a lot of ways, um, I associate sewing sometimes with that sort of thing. It's something I want to do when I'm happy, not something I want to do when I'm not feeling well, because it just made everything worse in that particular moment in time. So, um, sewing for me is not a dark time experience. It is a happy experience that Mm -hmm. I can do when I'm feeling good. Mm. Understood. How Mm -hmm. about you, Meg? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, yeah, it's just something to get my if if I'm going through a dark time, I, I can kind of get in like, you know, wormhole. If I'm on my computer, and I could be, I you know, you just get in like, <laughs> yeah, you know, wormholes. Uh, yeah. So earlier this year, I actually went through a, a miscarriage, and that was mm. it was uh, just. But the act of so it, it honestly really really did um, help me. It was just I kind of it was something to something to create and like something to just you know. Um, yeah, it's just the feeling of of loss. It, it helped me instead of just kind of laying, you know, laying down. Or so, yeah, I, I gave myself that time a little bit too. But I, mm-hmm. I think sewing was the first thing that kind of just got got me back, got me back up, really. Because then, you know, because it's always when you finish something and you did that surge of kind of just um, creating and stuff. So it mm-hmm. definitely, de- I definitely turned to sewing when um, when something, you know like that happened. So it definitely, definitely helped. It got me up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I have, I have so many examples of when sewing got me through Mm -hmm. dark times. Um, Mm -hmm. but I think probably the, the 
<clears throat> one of the more impactful ones recently was just like those early mom years when uh-huh. we when we moved out to Colorado. Um, we learned that we were expecting an unexpected third <laughs> child, and and it was right at the point when we were like, "Oh, we're going to go out to Colorado and we're going to like go on all these adventures." And uh-huh. it was like, "No, you're not. You're going to have a newborn, and you're gonna you're going to stay home and <laughs> take care of three small children." And wow. That will be your adventure for now. And I think that um, I think that sewing was the way that I kind of took a break from being a mom for mm-hmm. a little bit, um, kind of gave back to myself. And I think also developed some really great connections within the online sewing community. So it wasn't just the sewing itself. It was the community around it. And um, so I feel like, yeah, that was just one of those moments. But sewing is... Sewing is definitely my go-to. I feel like I, um, I've been thinking a lot about how the time change has affected my energy level, and like the only way that I can like put a positive spin on it is like, well, you can go down into your sewing room and it's dark <laughs> and it's cozy and just spend some quality time there, and like, you know, that's that's how I'm kind of putting a silver lining on it. So I I think I depend on sewing quite a bit actually. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man, I hate this time change when it gets so dark so early. So it's funny how this uh, question would be like, like an actually like a dark sky time. Yes, yeah, because you don't right. feel like just it's yeah. I because sewing is like all oh, the lights are on. You know, your sewing yeah. machine lights on, and totally mm-hmm. it, it. Yeah, yeah, it's well, like I, your little one person factory. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I imagine this is even worse in Toronto than it is here. But for me, the sun gets so low, like right before it. it It's just, it's always so low and it's always in my eyes if I'm outside and it just makes me Mm -hmm. crazy. I hate it. Mm -hmm. I guess I never really noticed in Toronto because there's so many tall buildings, right? So Mm -hmm. when I I don't really see the sun, like unless I go down to the waterfront or something, but uh, I probably will see the sun a lot more now that I have a backyard and Mm -hmm. I have a sunroom. Obviously, I can see it in my... (laughs) I have a whole room for looking at the sun now. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is my room for looking at the sun. I love it. Um, all right. Here's one thinking about from when you started as a podcaster. Um, what's one piece of advice you would have given baby podcaster you? For me, it's definitely to not worry so much about sounding perfect and having uh-huh. everything like come out clean and beautiful and poetic. Like you kind of, it took a long time to get used to that though, you know, but Mm -hmm. I feel like the imperfections and the like silliness are like my true personality. And I have to think that that's probably more uh, entertaining and engaging than me just trying to sound, you know, poetic and stuff. I remember being so nervous when we first started so that sometimes mm-hmm. my my throat would just close up, which it does when I'm nervous. Um, and I, you know, just tried to get through that. But thinking about it now, it's like, what was I so freaked out about? <laughs> I don't really know if I, because I was, um, I've always been very comfortable kind of performing and all. So I really wasn't, I, I don't know. I guess what I would just give myself as a baby podcaster is just, I don't know. Yeah. Just don't take the, maybe some credit, you know, you, yes. you always, yeah. You, if you put yourself out there, you're a, you know, you, um, but don't let the, the haters get to you. <laughs> totally. You know, for every, it's just so, just don't harp on, you know, if there is some, you know, a negative review or something there, but for everyone, there's like, many, many, many more positive. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate everyone who, yeah, again, listens and tells us how much they enjoy the, the show. It just, yeah, just warms my, warms my heart. And you know what? Nothing's for, like I, nothing's for everyone too. So yeah, I just, totally. it's hard. Yeah. So just, you know. Be yourself. And be yeah. yourself. But yeah, have a little bit of a thick skin. That's yeah, exactly. that, was, that was new for me. Exactly. That was new for me. But I feel mm-hmm. like. I feel like it doesn't last very long in the podcast world Uh because you are, you are sharing on such a personal level yeah, and that's, um, Uh that's scary and you're vulnerable. Uh Um, Uh so yeah. And it's also, yeah, when, when exactly for 
podcasting, when you do share, it's, uh, you know, sometimes uh, it's always good if people, you know, you know, reach back out and, you know, you're not always alone in, in some things. And so mm-hmm. that that's good. If I, you know, if through, you know, lots of things that we've shared on the podcast, if we, you know, if someone can relate to something that we've shared or gone through, whether, you know, funny, totally. happy or sad, it's always, it's always nice. Yeah. Those are like the most fulfilling moments, I think, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when you like make a connection. Yeah. Like that. For sure. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> I love this next question. <laughs> um, this is going to probably make me hungry, but <laughs> what's your favorite Italian dish? Meg, you get to go first. Oh, uh, well, carbonara is my favorite. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's. When I had it in Italy for the first time, I just be- it, it I became obsessed. It's I love it, and now my my dad actually my dad's a really good cook. He owned a catering company for a long time, um, and he's perfected like the recipe himself. So he actually makes it for me. Um, and uh, Julia, my husband, he's a very picky eater, and this is something that he'll eat. So it's we <laughs> we have it a lot. And my da- he he even gets like he doesn't even use like the pinchetta. He gets like the guanciale and like the actual from you know uh, an Italian like um, cured meat place. And yeah, it's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. What about you, Kate? Sure. Um, this might be the hardest possible question on this list. I know. For me to answer. I know. But I'm sitting here as I'm thinking about it. I think I'm going to go with um, a Parmesan, Um, either eggplant or chicken, depending on Mm. what uh, mood I'm in. Um, And actually, the answer to this question always depends on what mood I'm in. But um, yeah, (laughs) I like things that are covered in cheese and (laughs) um, (laughs) and um, yes, uh, Parmesan is generally covered in cheese and um, and delicious, and I like the meaty element of it, and it just it always makes me happy to eat it. So I'm gonna go with that. I mm. love that. My favorite category. I do enjoy things that are covered in cheese, but I also like things that are stuffed with cheese. And uh-huh. my my second place here is veggie lasagna, and the reason that I love it is because it's one of the things that I cook really well on a very short list. Um, my husband is also like a terrific cook. So, um, he does most of our fancy meals, but I, um, I think my top pick is manicotti. Like I just love manicotti and we had some the other night and it was (gasps) so good. And I remembered, yeah, just full of cheese. Mm -hmm. My favorite. I, I, I will say if we get to talk about our second favorite, um, I am a you can, huge, I'll allow it. Okay, okay. I, I'm just generally a huge fan of a caprese salad, but I don't like tomatoes. <gasps> so I ask for it without tomatoes, and then I just oh eat basil God. and mozzarella, and it is so good. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I love how it's like they're three ingredient salad. <laughs> mm-hmm. just and I don't like one of them. I, I know, but, yeah. you know, and my husband likes them. So if they won't leave it out, then I just give all the tomatoes oh, to my husband, and it's perfect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A mm. pizza would definitely have to like that. Yeah, uh, like a classic like a margarita pizza. Mm-hmm. Oh, like wood, wood um, on the wood oven. Mm. Yeah, we didn't um, even like talk about pesto yet. Yeah, <sighs> put that out there, um, so. Meg. What, next time you're here, when we're in Boulder, yeah. um, I uh-huh. have a place I want to take you that has like an authentic <laughs> uh, wood firing oven from like oh. they, they imported it from Italy and they do these fantastic. Uh, ne- uh, Napoleon, ne- Nepalese? No. Mm. Anyway, the- from Nepal, pizzas, and they are so good. <laughs> oh my god! I can't wait. Yes, I cannot wait. I want to go. Yes. We'll oh, go. I'm sorry. Uh, we're all going. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. I-, I wasn't just going to take Meg. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, just making sure that I'm on the list. Okay. Y'all. Well, and I can take you whenever, whatever you want to come yes. to Boulder, we can go. That sounds lovely. I'm so excited. All right. Next question. What did you want to be when you grew up as a little kid or, you know, from now moving forward? <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know what I want to be. I, I know. <laughs> um, I'll go first. I really wanted to be an architect. And, Ooh. Like I was obsessed with real estate, like probably should have known that I was a budding like 
HGTV fanaholic. Um, like that was just going to happen. But yeah, I was obsessed with real estate. I would draw houses. I like, I remember this one specific time that I designed like all these interiors for like a hotel. And I like went through like the Sears catalog and picked out all the bedding and all of that. Like I got really, really detailed and I have, I have no idea like what kicked that off. Um, but it lasted for a long time until, I don't know, I guess I didn't want to have to do all of the math. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of, I guess it would be, you'd still be working with rulers. So yeah. <gasps> remember yeah. in the first episode you were, you could always guess the amount that yeah. would have come in handy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for like dog houses and stuff <laughs> 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 for the short distances. <laughs> what is it? A designer Six dog inches? houses. Yes. 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 It was. Ah. How about y'all? Well, I always wanted to be an actress and I kind of gave that up. I kind of gave that up about the time I graduated high school because um, my children's theater company did not um, support me and I felt like I didn't have the talent to do it. Um, So I moved into backstage stuff, which was also something I really enjoyed doing. Um, however, I have recently, <laughs> so I can't remember if I've mentioned this on, on air, but, um, I'm currently working as a stage manager for a play at our local theater. And, um, we even often, often have actors not there. So as a stage manager, I just read their lines for them. And I've gotten a lot of compliments on my reading, especially mm. since one of the characters is a little girl. And I've been doing my little girl voice for that. <laughs> and somebody told me I ought to be a voice actress. So <gasps> I was thinking, that's a great oh. idea. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of toying with the idea of trying to figure out how to get into that. Um, Do I'm not it. Quite yeah, sure you where a- to go, but... <laughs> You have a terrific voice. I have a friend who does that, actually. Um, really? I'd be happy to connect you guys. Yeah. That would be <gasps> awesome. Wow. That's lovely. I love that. So I could I maybe really still that. sort of follow my dream a little exactly. bit. Totally. Exactly. Totally. Yeah. Um, I, I, have a, I, I remember I it was like in grade four, you know, you write and – I, I just remember this. I filled it out and it said, what do you want to be when you grew up? And I wanted to be a kennel keeper. I wanted to work at like, <laughs> like Aww. a dog. Aww. And I used to, when I was little, I used to, I wanted to like have my own dog boarding and what I wanted to like work at a kennel just to be around dogs all day. When I was little, we had two shih tzus and I would play kennel um, in our basement Cute. and I would have the dogs and I'd be like, okay, it's playtime. <laughs> I wanted to be one when I grew up. Um. Yeah, that's well, adorable. That's something that could still happen. You I know. know. Now that we have a backyard, and specialize in bunnies. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, I know. It. Well, I think we've decided that we're we're switching over to to dogs. Julian's never had a dog. Um. Mm. In his whole, like, he didn't have a childhood hood pet. He had a bird when he was little, but never had a dog. And now we have a huge yard, and mm. uh, we both that's loved. Perfect. We're both dog people. Uh. So we're gonna get a dog. Um. Yeah, and I think Bubby Bubby's been around dogs before and he seems and he seems fine. So oh, good. within the you know, within within a little bit after we finish renovating, maybe we'll think about adding a little, little doggy and mm. I can play kennel. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah. It was fun. I guess I used to also like um play I like my parents had desks and I used to play teacher, but I would pretend it was in the kennel. I used to teach them and so I have pictures of these, my dogs in sitting on these little school desks and I was writing on the chalkboard. (laughs) We're going to need to see that. Yes. Yeah, we have have to to dig dig that that one out. Yeah. (laughs) So yeah, that's kind of funny. (laughs) I love that so much. All right. Last question. Another trip down memory lane. Mm. What's the oldest thing you've sewn that you still own? That's. That's a tough one, but I have to say that it's probably a project I made in um, in our home ec class when I was in middle school. We uh, we had a final project for we we had it two years, seventh and eighth grade, and then um, we had a final project in the little sewing section um, because they split it into two. One was cooking and one was sewing, and my my 
seventh grade year, they had us do these um, these felt pillows where you bought these kits and it had all the pieces already cut out. And you um, blanket stitched them on and then you sewed around the edge and stuffed it and had a little pillow. And so I have a little pillow that looks like a like um, soda fountain ice cream sundae sort of thing. It's like a little <laughs> like a little glass with ice cream on top. Cute. And I th- I think it still exists um, probably at my parents' house. Um, so I don't know if it counts that I have it, but um, that is definitely the first thing that I sewed that is still around somewhere. I was like sitting here thinking about all the things that I still have because I still have quite a few. Um, just various like dresses I made when I was a little bit older. But I do think probably the first thing that I sewed by myself was my toga that I've <laughs> talked about on the show before. And I've totally forgot about that. It's like right in the closet behind me. It was like for an eighth grade Latin class. And we, it was like dress up in a toga day. And I had some like historical drawings that I, um, I mean, it's obviously a very simple thing to sew, but I drafted a facing. I had, wow. I did this little like open like sleeve uh, decoration and put trim around it and use some other like um, trim on the piece that you wrap around yourself. So I remember very distinctly being so proud of myself. And, you know, it was just like cheap cotton from probably from Walmart. Um, but yeah, I still have it. I think there's wow. there's a picture of me in it. <laughs> I, I, I love your toga. I think you, I think you wore it. I, I think you put it on at the at the office one time. Maybe it was Halloween did. or something. <laughs> it's because no, it's because I mentioned it on the podcast. I think we, we were talking to take about, a picture or something. Yeah, but I'll yeah. dig it back up for all time. Awesome. Yeah. Super awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't even remember. I I honestly I donate a lot. Like it's yeah, you know, it's cycle uh I make room for more new makes and so, you know, I've you know, being so many, you know, different sizes throughout the year and mm-hmm. you know started sewing when I was so young and I don't even remember I don't think I have anything too too old um that I've sewn I, I don't I wouldn't even know I think I still have some stuff from like fashion school that I've sewn mm. um so I guess that I don't know <laughs> I'm not that as we realized when we were talking last week about sen- I'm not that kind of sentimental with mm-hmm. right I wear them and then if I don't have re- I and it's funny, actually, I, um, Julian, when he worked with the Humane Society, uh, there was lots of girls that worked with him and we had a, we had them all over. It was like a, to, to see the bunnies. And I had this huge garbage bag full of clothes that I made that I was going to donate. And Julian's like, you should all look through that. And so it, we put a whole pile and they're <laughs> pulling it out and some, and like, it's just so, it was so amazing that if they take things and, um, they were like, oh, wow, look at this. And they're trying it all. And so I got rid of all of them. And so they just took them. So I, I don't, I give everything away that I just don't wear, don't fit anymore. So I don't it's know. so smart. <laughs> it's yeah. so smart. And I, I, sometimes I'm really in the mood for that to just like let things just go. And let sometimes go. I'm yeah. just really not. So it depends on my, <laughs> it depends on my mood. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Go ahead. for me, it depends on how much like a fraud I feel at any given time. Because, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm not going to give this away because who would want to wear this that I made? Aww. I'm getting better about that. <laughs> no, I love seeing things at the thrift store. I've, I've purchased uh, a lot of things that I find at the thrift store that are garments. I love when there's no tag in it. I'm like, someone made this. I yes. love those things. <laughs> yeah. They're so cool. I told y'all, like, that was our secret to Halloween costumes this oh, year. Right. They were all yes. handmade. Like, I loved the And, like, it made it, it was that much better because I'm yeah. like, a sewist is getting this and exactly. understands the work that you put in to put a zipper into like a full suit of faux fur. Like, oh, thank wow. you, past sewist. <laughs> that was super fun. Yeah. I I want some Italian food. I'm and, starving. <laughs> and um, I feel like I learned a little bit, something that I didn't know about y'all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Super lovely. I, Let's. Yeah. 
let's take a little break and then we're going to uh, try to get into the mood <laughs> for holidays. So. Oh my gosh. Let's make it happen. Oh. All right. <sighs> yep. When we approach the holiday season, we often think we need to head into our studios to sew gifts or something to wear. But what about some holiday decor and other holiday sewing fun? So let's talk about sewing for the holidays to spruce up our homes. Um, Mm -hmm. Are you guys doing any holiday sewing besides gifts this year? Are you, you know, making something as like decor for the home? I don't know. We haven't, (laughs) we haven't decorated yet. And I feel like when I, when we do take it out, I'll, there'll probably be a little something I want to add. I feel like I do kind of make a little something every year and just kind of build our collection that way. Um, last year I made, um, some new stockings for my kiddos using some, um, Pendleton wool that I had. So they're really nice. They'll last forever. They're really classy. Um, and I do have some garlands that I've made in the past, oh. but they're they're getting a little raggle taggle. Like I could probably do with um, with some new garlands and things. But that's probably the maybe I'll focus on garlands this year, and that that's probably going to be it for me. I I don't know. I feel like on our tree, we there's such a competition for space between like all of the mm-hmm. kids handmade ornaments that they've ever made ever that we still have that go on all of them on the tree every year. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we're usually, we're usually pretty full up with handmade, uh, decor. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know, I guess, there's a vague possibility I'll feel the urge to make like a little table runner or something, something pieced mm-hmm. with some of the um, sample fabrics that I have. But um, I, I don't, I don't do a whole lot of Christmas decorating because we don't have Christmas at my house. We always go to one of the family's houses mm. and I am a firm, firm believer in knit stockings because they stretch to accommodate more. Oh, and so, interesting. Um, it, I, I know, but that's the truth. And so <laughs> I have a bunch of knit stockings and I'm not likely to replace them anytime mm-hmm. soon, except for maybe my husband's because he, uh, he asked for a specific one and I made it based on the instructions in the little book that I have and somehow it turned out absolutely enormous. He can like Mm -hmm. wear it as a hat. Um, and he feels embarrassed (laughs) taking it places because he feels like it's like greedy because it's so big. So, um, I might make him another one at some point. Nice. Yeah. I want to do a lot of like home decor holiday sewing. Now that I have my own mantle, I want to make stockings. Um, Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, like our iconic stockings for the mantle. And uh, also because I probably can't can't afford too many uh, decorations, especially this year. I just Mm -hmm. got in an email before we recorded for like a quote on like floors. And I'm like, wow. Wow. (laughs) I got my first gas bill. And (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm going to be sewing a lot of decor, but I'm really excited about that. Uh, I really, yeah, I want to do definitely some embroidered tea towels this year. Um, And yeah, maybe I'll look into some sort of garland or something. I didn't even think about a garland. Mm -hmm. Um, I also want to make a table runner too and some napkins. Uh, Yeah. I want to do a lot of like, instead of yeah, in in addition to gift sewing, I'm going to do some gift sewing, but um, I definitely want to make some decorations. It'll be fun. Um, this question question wasn't on your list, Meg, but mm-hmm. I was curious. Like, what are your what's your holiday style like? I'm I'm surprisingly I'm I'm I think it's surprising. Like, very traditional. Like, we do red and green. We have like a little bit of sparkle in the mix. A little bit of vintage. My favorite ornaments that we have are it's a set from IKEA and then these little felt uh red and white mushrooms that go all over the tree. So it's a little eclectic, but we stick pretty close to like the reds and greens. I'm curious about you guys though. Hmm. I'm probably gonna do a lot of I love like 
you know, evergreen and snow. I do a lot of white and green. Yeah. That's kind of a lot of a theme to kind of our whole house decor. It's like our color palette is gold, kind of silver, white, black, and green. <laughs> so I think our decor is going to be, yeah, a lot of like sparkly green things and kind of snow, like sparkly white things, like sparkle, sparkle snow sheet. <laughs> sparkle snow sheet. I thought for sure it was going to be like lime green because I do yeah. like lime green Christmas things. Oh yeah, definitely lime green. Yeah, like lots of lime green uh, stuff um, for sure. I know. I'm interested. Yeah, because I I don't know. I, I, yeah, it's, it's going to be territory. fun to discover that and mm-hmm. kind of make make all that. But yeah. yeah. What mm-hmm. about you, Kate? Oh, um, mine is also pretty eclectic. It's sort of it's sort of um, get collected over many years, Mm -hmm. um, from the time I was in college and my roommate wanted a Christmas tree. So we went out to, you know, Walgreens and got a cheap, cheap little fake tree and, and little decorations to go with it. And then from there, you know, some of those still go on the tree and then people have gifted us plenty of ornaments over the years and we occasionally impulse buy um ornaments usually star wars or mm-hmm. um or dinosaur based um <laughs> is is what we tend to randomly get yeah we just we have a lot of a lot of different things and a lot of different styles um i've got a cute little old fashioned sewing machine that somebody gave me um cute and yeah, so it's just, it's just kind of a collection of various things. And at this moment, um, we don't put anything breakable on the tree because cats and they have oh, knocked right over the it. tree mm-hmm. a couple of times. <gasps> so with Maggie, when Maggie was here, we separated it. We, when it was just Maggie, we put the, um, delicate ones up on top and the, and the non-breakable ones on the bottom. And then Romulus came along and he just likes to climb to the top if he can. <laughs> mm-hmm. So now it's all the non-breakable ones. And the breakable ones we look at and we sigh and we move on. But uh, the one thing that may be notable is that we have a set of, we have a breakable and a non-breakable spire for the top of the tree rather than a star or an angel because that's very traditional in Europe where my husband's family is from. And so he really loves those. So that's what we got. Nice. What is this question was not all I'm just thinking of what, what's your like outside holiday to co- do you just do lights or there's like figurine? Like, is there like the, the big blow up thing? Now I'm just <laughs> to know. We're, uh, I don't know. I've, I've never had a house front before. I think we're yes. just going to be like sleek lights, but I don't know. Yeah. We're, we're pretty, we're pretty low key. We usually put a little swag across the garage mm-hmm. um, and then wrap whatever's left around a, um, evergreen tree that we have right next to the garage. And then we've got one of those um, light cannons that, you know, throw up lights mm-hmm. onto the front of the house. Oh, okay. Um, so it's it's a lot of green and a little bit of red and it comes on. Uh, we, have a, we have it set to come on automatically when it gets dark. And then when somebody thinks about it, they go outside and press the little button that makes everything move. Um, and that one's kind of fun because it sends all the little lights through the front window of the house and then the cats are like a bus yep mm-hmm. um so yeah pretty low key for us mm-hmm. we're pretty low key as well i i tend to like more of the like greenery style like fresh oh, yeah. like handmade wreath we also we have front posts on our porch and we tend to wrap those with greenery and lights um we do have a big blow up snowman um but we've never set it up. But maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe this year is the year. I think so. I'm trying to think, is there anything that you could sew for outdoor holiday decor? Like, could you, I was thinking it would be kind of fun to make like out of, I don't know, like white faux fur or white set, like something like a little snowman. You just stuff, you know, three um, balls together or something. I, mm-hmm. I want to like try making like a, because I don't know, then it's unique. Cause sometimes a, I find with holiday decorations, it's, you know, everyone goes to the same store and so you see a lot of repeats. I want to sell something like unique that I always like put out. I'm thinking I might make like a Misa, like 
or like the equivalent of like Julian and I, like snowman style, and like, dr- like dress them like, oh, <laughs> like how we would dress or I don't know. I'm trying to think of something I can sew for the outside that's unique. Yeah, just uh, keep in mind what fabrics you're going to use yeah, for that, no, I think, true. because that would be my concern about white faux fur is yeah. that, you know, <laughs> it could get no. pretty gross. That's um, yeah. true. <laughs> Minky might be better because Minky is washable, um, but it had it would have to be, basically, you'd have to be able to take it apart to wash mm, it. To wash it. Yeah. Or like like a rain coat, like a nylon, like a white kind of... Mm-hmm. Um, like a raincoat fabric or something like yeah. a waterproof fabric. Maybe I could look into that. Yeah, for or like sure. a, a coated canvas. Now I'm just set on making these snow <laughs> <laughs> or snow snow people. I guess. Yeah. Snow people. Yeah. Snow people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I look yeah. forward to seeing what solution you come up with. I know. I, know. I love that. Hmm. You said something, Amanda. Too. Re- I didn't even think about like making my own wreaths and stuff. Like you could even use like fabric and stuff like, oh there's yeah lots of fabric and like even yarn wreaths I didn't even think about a wreath as a DIY uh, project for the holidays there's two really great wreath projects in so news winter just oh, saying is that? yeah, yeah. Oh, there's yes, actually the um and they're one of them is so smart uh it's a it's no so and it's just oh. taking like a, a an existing a uh, fleece scarf and then wrapping that around a foam uh, core. Mm. And I, I love that, but yeah, we've had a lot of wreath projects actually uh, between mm-hmm. Sew News and CME. And I feel like if they were somewhat protected outside, they'd probably last for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm declaring now that I am not buying any holiday decor this year, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm going to make, if I want like a, something for this or something for this room, I need to make it. I'm going to, I'm declaring that it's on the record. <laughs> okay. It's, it's been noted. It's mm-hmm. been noted. So to get some ideas, like have, have you sort of anything in the past or what are your favorite things? It not, you not necessarily have had to make them, but something that you, like a dream project that you've wanted to sew yourself for the holidays or something you've made in the past or what are your favorite things that you could make around the home for the holidays? Um, I've never made any myself personally, but um, in our family, there is a large number of um, homemade placemats. Um, my oh, mom that's a good quilts. idea. So she makes, she makes uh, quilted placemats. Um, and I've got a very cute set of uh, mouse themed, Christmas mouse themed um, placemats. But um, we have an old, old set that I believe we inherited from my grandparents that's not actually quilted, but it's, um, I'm trying to think of how to describe them. It, they're, um, they're just plain fabric, but two different ones on each side. And then along one edge, the edge that goes along the edge of the table, there are these little triangles that dangle over, I think about five of them. And then on the each end of each triangle is a jingle bell. And so you can sit there and jingle the bells while you eat your dinner. <laughs> and then your parents oh, get really mad. But <laughs> uh, but they're really, they're really fun and they're very, they're very striking. People kind of, well, I mean, you know, I've been using them since I was very young and uh yeah they're they're full of nostalgia for me they're real cute mm-hmm. How about yeah, you, Amanda? I don't know um I will say like my I think my aunt made my brother and I these um I guess it was cruel it was like cruel thread but more I don't know that um it was I don't know exactly what you would call the design style, but she made us personalized stockings and those were so special, like taking them out every Uh year. She has passed and they're, it's just so lovely to have something that obviously took forever to make. Um, So I think at some point I'd like to have, I'd I'd like to create some kind of heirloom type pieces, but Uh um you know, we don't really extend too much past the tree and like the mantle in our house, but I would love to make some like Christmas throws and maybe some Christmas yeah. pillows. Yeah. We have um our tree skirt that we use is store bought and I'd always thought that'll do for a year or two and then I'll replace it with something handmade and I haven't yet. 
Yeah, um, I was like, when did you get that tree? Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> it's been a while. It's super cute. It's very cute. Um, you could just add to it, maybe embroider yeah, it or something. It's true. It's yeah. true. But I feel like, yeah, I, I think there are some, I mean, because that, that's part of it too, like taking it out kind of creates the whole atmosphere of the season, mm-hmm. you know, for your, for yourself, for the little people in your lives. Yeah. So many memories associated with that. Mm-hmm. So. I feel like there's lots of longevity and like handmade to go because they're not like heavily used. Or, like, so yeah, they, la- they pass on right. and um, um, they really do kind of stay in the test of time because there's not, they're only used like a, you know, small portion of the year and then they're brought out again. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, it's always nice to have something to, to pass on. I know at my, at uh, my parents' house, I have a stocking that uh, my grandmother made me and it's still like, it's, you know, it has a name and she spelled my name. It's like with twill tape, but she like bent it. As, and so that says Meg, <laughs> like the original, like <laughs> it's, it's very, it's very sweet. So yeah. Um, I was going to say something. I, I had an idea that I totally forgot what I was. I had this genius thing that I was just excited about making and I just totally <laughs> forgot. It'll come back. <laughs> It'll come For back. Sure. Yeah. But I think in the, I want to have two separate, like upstairs, it's going to be all like kind of chic, but downstairs it's like totally retro yes. in the basement. And I want to have like a seventies, like retro. I want a separate tree with really, oh, ornaments. Yes. That was it. I wanted to make like really kind of there's that vintage ornament collection right yes. now for, on uh, CME, and it is so cute i want to have like a retro 70s kind of wonderland winter <laughs> wonderland down there with the wood burning fire and all that stuff so yeah i really want to do some embroidering ornaments um mm-hmm. that can be that can be yeah super fun we always had when i was little we had the kids tree and that's where they my parents put all like the decorations that we come home from school and they had their curated you know adult tree that oh the curated (laughs) tree (laughs) (laughs) and i feel like i'm gonna be the same way be like this tree is like my like my perfect tree and then downstairs like oh yeah we'll just put that in the downstairs tree (laughs) (laughs) i know i feel like i totally this is my I know I kind of skip years and this is, I feel I'm going to get You're in really the zone. into it. Yeah. I love that. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, let's ask one more question uh, since we could just talk about, I'm sure we could talk about this for a while, but are you making a special like holiday outfit for a get together? Are we going to sew something? So frosting, are you going to any like holiday parties, something for yourself to wear for the season? Um. I didn't really have plans to, but we are going to this fun, wait for it, skate party. (laughs) Um, And it's actually, it's family friendly. It's, uh, it's, I think there's going to be vendors there. It's not, I mean, it's not a formal event by any means. Kid friendly, vendors, drinks, like Christmas music, but it's kind of a, um, like a nightmare before Christmas thing. <gasps> so nice. I, and I, that would actually, I, that would not be the first time I've made a nightmare before Christmas um, themed costume. We had a, we had a party with that theme way back in the day. And it was so much fun. We took like, it was Christmas, but, and we took out all of our Halloween decor again and like put them all together. It was, it was perfect. Oh, like it was, it was Definitely my kind of Christmas. So maybe I'll make something fun for that. Um, I like my Christmas, like a little, maybe a little side of spooky. Mm. (laughs) Well, I'm not aware of any Christmas parties that I'm going to this year. Um, I know that there is a a joint birthday party for my mom and Mm -hmm. my husband in early December. Um, but it's pretty casual. It's hanging out mm-hmm. at my mom's house and eating yeah. spaghetti. So I don't think I really need any mm. so frosting for that. Plus, I don't think I'm going to have any time to make anything. Um, and other than that, I don't think I have anything on the schedule. So uh, I'll probably just stick with the things that I already have. But um, should it become necessary... I do have some sequin fabric and some fringe sequin mm-hmm. fabric Ooh. and some beaded fringe. And I've got some stuff I can put together if I need to. So um, nice. 
think about a possibility, but I don't know. <laughs> what about you, Meg? Are you guys going to have like a holiday party at your house or? Um, I don't think so. We yeah. might not be like totally ready. Mm-hmm. ready. Um, yeah, definitely want like 100% next year. Cause everything will be done. Um, cause now we're just kind of going into, you know, there's a whole, um, in every industry now, you know, supply chain, um, for getting yeah. even some of the floors that we might, so we might not even have floors. <laughs> now I realize now I'm rethinking. I'm like, am I, should I be holiday so <laughs> decorating if we don't have floors? In? Yes, <laughs> you should. <laughs> <laughs> At least my sewing mach- my studio, uh, I could just, I could just decorate my studio. Like I could put um, mm-hmm. maybe a little tree there. I could just make that my little oasis because those full, thank gosh, we had hardwood floors all, all throughout, but for the kit, we're doing, redoing the floor in the kitchen and the entry room and kind of the, into the sunroom and stuff. But my studio should be 100% done. So I'll just decorate that. But I do want to make, we're not going to be going, I don't think we have any parties to go to, but I just want to make a nice pair of like holiday pajamas because I love to oh, spend, yeah. I spend so much time in my jammies during the holidays. I want, I don't have a holiday theme set. And so I want to make like a red silk pair or something or I don't know. So we'll see. So That's pajamas. such a good holiday, idea. I love fancy it. Fancy jammies. Fancy so frosting. Jammies frosting jammies Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's awesome yeah and we're going to give away some freebies in this uh, episode too so make sure you head to the show notes um there's a little gnome table runner pattern there's a a pattern for earrings if you want to just make yourself some they're called cheery earrings holiday earrings and holiday colors it's a fun little fun little download and some little reindeer ornaments as well as a snowflake embroidery design so we're gonna Mm -hmm. give away some of those little freebies to help inspire you doing some um some decor for the holidays as well make sure to check out the cme embroidery winter 2021 freebies page there's tons of freebies and those Mm -hmm. will be up until december 31st and kate did these adorable little like the um, the snow people that were they're so cute. They're like little scale. They are so yes. cute, Kate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they're that's a they're pretty adorable. Though. Yeah, yeah. So that's one sure. of my favorite projects. So I, cute. I need to make I need to make another one because I don't have the sample back. So I need to make some for my house. Mm-hmm. Very cute. <laughs> yes, you do. Oh, I'm just feeling so cheery now. <laughs> oh. I gotta. I think I gotta turn on the like. It is cooler here now, so that's mm-hmm. helping me. But I think I. I think I just got to start pumping out the Christmas music. Maybe that'll, yeah. maybe that'll help. Oh, I, my favorite. Yeah. I just need to get through the weekend after Thanksgiving. Cause that's when my play <laughs> is up and it's a Christmas yeah. play. So I've been kind mm-hmm. of exposed to that sort of thing for a while, yeah. but mm-hmm. I can't, I can't focus on anything until I get that. Yeah. Done. But it's only another week. Sure. So. Right. Yeah. Thanks. I guess for us and as being Canadian, we already had our Thanksgiving. So right. it's kind of, Kind of after Halloween or more importantly, like after kind of Remembrance Day, uh, which mm-hmm. is November 11th here. Like that's when kind of everything switches to holiday. So because, you know, we've already had Thanksgiving and all that. So right. everything is holiday mode up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to put on my well, Justin Bieber Christmas too. album. <laughs> that's right. Well, <laughs> and when this episode comes out, hopefully – Will be more in the Christmas mood, right? Too. Yeah, because that, this will come true. out. We're kind of recording from this, now. But yeah, it's mm-hmm. one a bit early, but yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Let's hope. Whew, that was fun, though. That, that mm-hmm. made me yeah. feel a little bit more ready. I'm feeling cheery. Yeah, 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 <laughs> for sure. Okay, well, why don't we jump into our Sojo segment, our very favorite segment, where we can talk about what's giving us our sewing mojo right now. So let's start off with Amanda. What's your sewing Sojo right now? Um, I feel like I was going so strong, and then the time change happened, and... <laughs> I just hit a bit of a wall, yeah. but um, I've got some, I'm working on some overalls. I'm still in overalls mode. Um, I was thinking about um, some more athleisure options for myself, just thinking Ooh. about co- like cool weather, working out, skating, those kinds of things. So 
Um, that's going to have to wait until I get some gifts sewn, but I'm, I'm thinking about cozy stuff for sure. Mm-hmm. How about you make what's your sojo? Um, I'm still, um, in a different city as my sewing machine. So I'm not really sewing anything. Not really sewing so. at the moment, but it no, sounds like so you've got I some think- ideas. Exactly. Uh, definitely some ideas. <laughs> well, um, I've been getting pretty uh, busy with the play at this point. So um, I'm, I've am i been a little bit lower on the sewing lately. But this week I did manage to, for the first time, make a pair of underwear. <gasps> which, really? Yes. Yes. I nice. pulled a pattern off my favorite pair that they don't make anymore. And um, it seems to have turned out okay. I haven't worn them yet because I used a lot of glue stick to hold the fabric to the elastic. And I was like, ah, I think I'm going to wash this before I wear it. So, um, but that load of laundry is done. So I should be wearing them pretty soon. So let's move on to our sew and tell segment. This is where we answer question, questions from our listeners, which obviously we've been doing a lot today, um, but we just pulled out one more so we didn't lose our segment. Um, so our question today is, what is the one sewing tool you can't do without? I think mine is a nice pair of sharp snips, um, um, about, mm-hmm. I don't know, two and a half inches, something like that. Um not only for clipping threads, but I often use those to, um, if I need to clip a curve or notch a curve, um, often I'll use them when take, if I need to rip out a seam. Uh Um, yeah, I use, I use my snips pretty, pretty constantly. So I think that's, that's one for me. Um, I'm going with rotary. (gasps) That's Mm. mine. (laughs) Yeah. I, I use that thing so much yeah. and for like everything. Um, and it makes me so happy cause it's so fast. Yep. Mm-hmm. And like, I even cut out my paper patterns mm-hmm. with my rotary cutter. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It's just, sometimes it's like an extension of me and <laughs> I probably take it for granted and knock on wood. I have never like seriously injured myself with it. Although I've come, very close. <gasps> I have a oh, I have an idea for a Halloween costume next year. <gasps> Edward Rotary Cutter hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. Somebody write that down. So okay, a choice has been made because you could That's make hysterical. them out of if you like spray paint like um, card, but you could make yeah. oh like, yeah, but that's yeah. I could. I could not live without my rotary cutter. I grade seams with it. I do like yes. tri- if I have a seam like frayed edges before I, I just I use it all the time. I wouldn't live without it. You Edward even, rotary cutter hands. <laughs> you even <laughs> open up buttonholes occasionally. With your I do, rotary I go. Tip, I tap it. I oh chaos. That's just chaos. Yeah. <laughs> even yeah. <sighs> yep. I I do love that. Yep. I'm, I'm it's a great tool. With mine now. I'm not in the vicinity of a rotary. <laughs> I probably whole. could have used it in some of these home, home decor, pro- like opening all these Amazon boxes. What, could, uh. what possibly could I have used? <laughs> <laughs> team rotary cutter. For so sure. team rotary cutter. Mm-hmm. Y'all, that was a super fun episode. Yeah. I am like, I feel like I know you both so much better now. And I'm in the mood for the holidays a little bit. So I'm in the mood for Italian food and Italian the food. Holidays. Yeah. So Jillian great. has some li- leftover little Caesars pizza. So that'll have to do for now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wah, wah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that'll be my Italian feast after, <laughs> after mm. this. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like it. That See, we have Mar- Mark's not going to be home in time for dinner today. So maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll hop on my favorite Italian place and just order something. <gasps> do it. Oh, do do that. Do we'll live vicariously through. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> well, do be sure to check out all of the amazing freebies that we've pulled together yeah. for you. I feel mm-hmm. like that's a nice little it's like a holiday starter pack. For sure. There you yeah. go. There you go. Um from us to you as a very small thank you for listening for three Three whole years, years. Um, or for it's one been a whole l- episode if this is your first or for one whole episode yeah, yeah if you're still we're here we're glad you're here <laughs> thank you for <laughs> <laughs> and now you know all about 
our our beloved pets of yesteryear and so many other random things about us. I know. <laughs> but, um, also wanted to mention that throughout the month of December, we are hosting a terrific oh. pattern contest on SoDaily.com. It's going on throughout the month. We have some really fun categories and um, yeah, definitely a way to just celebrate garment sewing, celebrate some of our favorite pattern categories and and learn about new to us designers because there's always more mm-hmm. um, and more folks creating amazing stuff um, and getting to know those folks. Um, but also make sure that you are subscribed over on So Daily Network because we'll actually be announcing the pattern winners there first. So you can get a little jump on things yeah. um, and then everything will be on SoDaily.com. But it's a fun little, very gentle competition i think I'm, I oh think yeah can, it'll, it'll be fun i'm so excited to see yeah what what are it's gonna be nominated for the categories yeah, and what who the wins the are. category i love mm-hmm. voting on things uh mm-hmm. i'm and oh yeah and i've declared every whatever the winning pattern is in each category i'm gonna sew each one of them next year so i'm gonna sew each winning pattern and if i have already sewn it all so another one. <laughs> so it again. So it again. I need a I need a project for next year. Yeah. Maybe I need to think on that. Mm-hmm. That'll be my that'll be my homework. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you guys again. Yes. That was yeah. a really lovely trip down memory lane. I know. And um yeah, lovely. Looking forward to the season a little bit more. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna think about sure. little Henry the mouse. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, uh, so Henry. Cute. Yeah, he was he was such a sweet little guy. And unfortunately, the only picture I have of him is a printout of a picture in my best friend's bra. So um uh, I, I I'm not gonna be Aww. sharing that. Oh it was a, it was oh, a oh, sports got- bra and she put him oh, in there and, he was just, and then he stuck his little head space. out and I it was adorable. Meant, for some reason I thought you meant you stored the picture like in a bra. I don't know what no. I thought. No. It took me a minute. <laughs> I, okay, but I, I got it. I can see it now. So. Happy, happy little Cute. Henry. He was, he was very happy. I He's a that. boob man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 On that note, he was a Cheerio <laughs> man, but he was okay with boobs. <laughs> Cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the two things on the list above you, Kate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Cheerio and boobs. He liked, kind of like cake. He loved boobs and <laughs> What a guy. What, what a guy. Anyways. All right. He was great. All right. Ugh. On that note, on until that next note. time. <laughs> Happy stitching. <Bye>. Happy stitching. <laughs> Bye. For links to everything we talked about in this episode, go to our show notes page at SoDaily.com slash SoIntel. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at SoIntelPodcast at GoldenPeakMedia.com or visit us on Instagram at SoIntelPod. Answer the SoIntel question, tell us your SoJo, or just leave us some feedback. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe on your podcasting platform of choice. And please leave us a review, ideally a good one, because that helps listeners like you find our podcast. And tell your sewing friends about us, too. Thanks for listening, and happy stitching. Sew and Tell is a Sew Daily podcast and produced by Golden Peak Media. It's hosted and produced by Meg Healy, Amanda Carestio, and me, Kate Zeinard. Daisha Clay is our producer. Director of podcasts is Jared Mayer. Tiffany Warble is director of content. Kelsey Ratterman handles our marketing. And Andrea Lotz does all things digital. If you'd like more information on sponsoring or advertising on So and Tell, go to goldenpeakmedia.com. <laughs>